So Monster Reader is written by Christina Cody <laughs> and it's illustrated by Heather Ozy. And let us begin. The afternoon sun blazed high in the sky, sprinkling rays through the trees. I Squirrels gathered nuts and birds took flight mm -hmm. and butterflies fluttered on the breeze. A family of four set off on a walk to visit their local library. It was down the street, over two blocks, near the enormous oak tree. Jason ran zigzags and jumped over cracks. Megan spun twirls and danced along the way. Mom sighed heavy and smiled when she asked, Could you two, for once, just walk normal today? Walking is a bore, giggled Megan. We like to run and jump and then run some more. I can soar like a dragon and swoop like an eagle, scurry like a mouse and trot like a beagle. I can gallop like a horse and prance like a unicorn, crawl like an ant and wriggle like an inchworm. We want to climb rocks and trees and swing on posts, jump over puddles, jump in puddles, and soak all our clothes. Mom gave Dad a knowing grin. Let's go, you two. Let's go jump, wiggle, and spin. Moving down the road, they duck walked, crawled on all fours, and even stalked a toad. They whirled in circles, played leapfrogs, and scooted on their backs. In the grass, they dropped and they flopped and squatted like little crabs. Never once did they move in a walking way. They would sing, dance, and shout. We twist, we bounce, we tiger crouch. Lots of spinning and dancing and hopping down the block. But when they saw the library, Megan and Jason stopped. Okay, Mom and Dad, it's time to go in. It's time to walk and not time to spin. There are rules in the library, rules we must meet, like soft, quiet voices and soft walking feet. Hello, Megan and Jason. Welcome the librarian, Miss Moonstar. What perfect timing. Just the other day, we received the best book for word swallowers and book eaters. It's on display downstairs and it's called Monster Reader. But I should warn you, once you read a monstrous book, it changes the way you see the world and you begin to take second looks. Jason and Megan couldn't resist. They found Monster Reader and opened to the first page to find a monster teacher standing beside a book buffet. 
Monster teachers relish reading. They read to their students every day and encourage them to sample many books on the book buffet. But monster students can be picky, pushing books around their plate. Books uneaten, words unslurped, sit on their dishes and wait. Books are delicious. This much I know is true. Books are so scrumptiously delicious. Even monsters love them too. Monsters of all shapes and sizes read all kinds of books. Every day and every night, they sit in their reading nooks. Little monsters nibble nursery rhymes with rings around their rosies, squishing all the little humpties between their little toesies. They drink in limericks with tongue twisting, lip licking rhymes, savoring every sip and asking for seconds every time. Haikus are the frosting for the poetry cake they eat, but little monsters have a favorite. Mother Goose can't be beat. Noble monsters gobble fantasies with dragons, pixies, and trolls. They burp the happy endings that fill up their monster bowls. There's that frog again. There's that <laughs> frog again. Good job, Michael. Sipping tea with fairy tales will make princess monsters sigh. <sighs> they stir in sweet prince charmings and castles way up high. Pirate monsters chomp history with ships and ghostly lore, then feast upon the mysteries and make room to scarf some more. Skelly monsters sink their teeth into the legends of Serpent Nessie. They slurp mouth-watering tales and get their scales good and messy. Icy monsters much scary stories with sizzling suspense and thrills. They melt the words in their mouths and give their spines tingling chills. Scary monsters gnaw on humor, pranks and jokes galore. Sometimes they gorge adventures and their tummies grumble for more. <laughs> Woolly monsters crunch tall tails with Paul and his big blue ox, while myths are yummy morsels of Zeus and Pandora's box. When it's time for sweet dessert, and as long as they are able, moral monsters sprinkle cupcakes with lots of fondant fables. Remember students, to taste is not to eat. You should sample a variety of books to find an appetizing read. Students began to ravage an assortment of the sweetest treats, like Di Camillo Cornelia Funk and the delectable Demi. While dining on books by Muth and Snicket, monster students gladly puckered. After hemming it up with the grand Dr. Seuss, they became happy hiccupers. <laughs> <laughs> the teacher watched her smiling students pick commas from their teeth, become book tasters, slippers, grazers, burpers, any kind of book eater you can be, chomp much, devour, and crunch, become a monster reader like me. That book was monstrous and delicious. We licked the pages, chewed the illustrations, and now we are already seeing things differently. So glad you enjoyed it. Like I always say, making time to read will give you an appetite for life. Don't forget to say goodbye to Theodore. He's the ultimate monster reader. Appetizing books, Theodore? Bet you couldn't wait to come down here to read. We'll see you again next week. The end. And I know someone likes those monster cupcakes. Are you ready? At the end of the book, there is a recipe for monster cupcakes. Mm. <laughs> and there's Somebody a picture of lips. a real monster cupcake.
Thank <laughs> you. 